setting up your microphone with your Go XLR is not just about making your voice sound as good as possible. It's making sure that the sound coming from your mouth and your microphone sound good in the mix with everything else that you have going on in your live stream. If you're doing reaction videos, playing games, or have music in the background, it doesn't do you any good to have a really full tone if all those frequencies are conflicted with your other sound sources and people can't actually hear what you're saying. In this video, we're gonna talk about the techniques and the settings that I recommend to make sure that you are always clear and intelligible on your live stream. I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative, and we put this video together to show you the best settings possible for live streaming with the Go XLR. Now, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that we have in this video, please check out the links down in the description below. We have current up-to-date pricing and specs for everything that you see in this video at a variety of online retailers to make sure that you find the best price possible. Now, my favorite mic with the Go XLR is the RE20. This is the microphone that I'm using right now. It has all the benefits of a dynamic microphone in terms of being rugged, having pretty good inherent noise rejection. It's very comparable to the Shure SM7B, but it does offer just a little more clarity, which I do love about this microphone. Again, we do have links down in the description below. So let's just quickly walk through all the settings that I recommend. I'm going to try and contextualize everything with why I set everything the way I set it and what everything is doing so hopefully you can learn what these settings actually mean so if you want to fine tune this to your voice you have the knowledge to go ahead and do that as well okay so I'm just gonna grab my headphones here put them on just so I can hear what I'm doing and then we're gonna walk through all the settings so the first thing that we need to double check right off the bat is your mic gain settings. Obviously, it doesn't make any sense to go through everything else if your mic gain is set incorrectly. This is foundational to setting everything up. So you can see here I have my gain set to about 53 dB, which is pretty good for the RE20. If you're using something like the Shure SM7B, it's not uncommon to be up around 60 to 62 dB. So just do whatever you have to do to make sure that when you're talking comfortably, that your green bar here is right in the middle of the good section. So I'm going to close that. All right, so next we have the noise gate. Now the point of the noise gate here is you can think of it as a way that you can auto mute your microphone when you're not speaking into it. This is really great if you have a lot of background noise, fans, air conditioners, planes flying overhead, if you live with roommates, if you don't have a perfectly controlled studio, which a lot of people don't have, it's a really good way. It just mutes the mic when you're not speaking into it. And when you speak into it, you break the threshold, it opens up the microphone and people can hear what you're saying. Now the downside of a noise gate is you can hear it clicking in and and out. So if you are too aggressive with your noise gate, it's probably more distracting than it's worth. For a video like the one I'm doing right now where it's just me and talking to the camera, I recommend going without a noise gate as much as possible. So if you're doing voiceover or something like that, try not to use a noise gate. But if you are streaming with video, music, game noise, anything like that in the background, you can get away with a lot more aggressive noise gate because that sound of the clicking in and out of the noise gate is masked by all the other noise going on on your live stream. So it is worth it to have a pretty aggressive noise gate because then people just hear you when you're talking and they don't hear things like fans in the background. So I'm gonna walk through a couple of these settings so you can hear what I'm doing. Definitely do put on a pair of headphones if you do have it, it'll be a lot easier for you to hear what I'm talking about. So the noise gate works with a threshold and attenuation, attack and release. The threshold is the volume at which you break the noise gate because the gate is on by default and then it opens up the microphone. So right now it's completely turned off. As I raise this, you're going to hear it getting more and more kind of clippy and digital. You're going to hear right now, it really does clip every syllable I'm kind of, as I start talking and the noise gate breaks. So as you can tell, that's quite distracting and quite irritating if you're trying to listen to that for a long period of time. So for me, I like it somewhere around minus 52, 53, depending on the mic. Sometimes it's minus 50. That is pretty good. But the RE20, somewhere around minus 55 to minus 50. I want the noise gate to open up very easily whenever I start speaking. I don't want the first syllable of every word I say to get clipped. I do just want it to sound as natural as possible. 
Now, even right now, you can hear it kind of clipping in and out as I start and stop speaking. That's not always ideal. So another tool that you can use is to lower the attenuation. The attenuation is how much of your feed gets muted when the noise gate is in. So by setting this to 50%, that means only 50% of the background noise is getting silenced when I'm not speaking and the noise gate is in. So for me, this sounds really natural. It's about as natural as you can possibly get a noise gate to sound. And it does work pretty well for getting rid of things like fans and air conditioners in the background if you're not speaking for long periods of time, if you're just going quiet as you play your game on your live stream. So this is a setting I would use. I am going to turn the noise gate off now just because, as I said before, with a talking head video, I find it more distracting than it's worth. Uh, so I am just going to turn that off. Okay, next we have the EQ settings. Now, as I mentioned before, the goal here isn't to make the most full sound possible. There's a lot of other people on YouTube that have recommendations on how to do that if you are doing a talking head like this video, in which case, honestly, you buy the microphone that you buy because you like the way it sounds. So if you're doing a talking head video like this one, and if I'm ever doing a talking head video like this one, I'll leave the EQ pretty flat most of the time. I don't mess with it too much. I want to accurately represent my voice and the investment that I made in a microphone like the RE20. I want to hear that microphone. There's no point buying a microphone like this if I'm just going to go change everything. That being said, we do have different goals for live streaming. For live streaming, we don't want the biggest, most full voice. We want people to actually be able to hear us. We don't want our microphone competing with game noise, a video if we're doing a reaction video, music if we're doing a music critique. There's a lot of like drum critique channels or review channels. You want to stand out among those types of sounds. So that's our goal with our EQ and that's what we're going to cover in this video. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to expand this and we're going to turn on Enable Fine Tune. In turning on Enable Fine Tune just opens up the ability to sweep the frequencies that we're targeting here to be a lot more precise in what we're doing. We don't want broad moves, we want precision so we can do exactly what we're trying to do here. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build in what's known as a high pass filter. A high pass filter to put it quite simply, is we want to get this microphone out of the subwoofer. There's no low, low rumble. If you listen to a subwoofer and turn off the mid highs, you don't want to hear that coming from your voice. It just it doesn't add to clarity, intelligibility, or anything like that. It's made for a kick drum, a bass guitar, or some game noise or special effects. So we're going to get our voice out of that range and out of everybody's subwoofer to make our voice just a little bit more clear. So to do that, we're going to dive the 30 hertz to zero. We're going to do a sweep here to the 75 hertz, and we're going to bring that to minus three, something like that. And then we're going to put the sweep on the third channel to 100 hertz. Most subwoofers have a crossover. The crossover between the subwoofer and your mid speaker is somewhere between 80 hertz and 120 hertz. So we're just shooting right in the middle. By the time we get to 100 hertz, we want the volume of this microphone back at its default by zero. So that's exactly what we've done here. For the fourth band here, we do want to sweep this all the way to the right, even though we're not editing it. I'm going to cover why in a second. The next one, we want to create a low mid cut. Again, this will really open up the microphone. If you have headphones on, you're going to hear it immediately. For headphones that have a wide sound stage, this is where they put the cut to create that openness. So we're going to recreate that as well. This is very, very popular, especially in live sound and live streaming for opening up microphones to create space for other instruments. And again, there's no real intelligibility coming from your microphone in this 400 hertz to 500 hertz section that we're going to roll down. In a perfect world, I would cherry pick 400 hertz, but we can't really get there with the sweeps. You can see here I got 250 hertz and I'm at 500 hertz, so I can't quite get where I want, but this will have to do. So we'll take that to minus two. You should hear that open up the microphone quite a bit. It's a pretty big change. But by pinching its neighbor here to 250 all the way to the right and this one to 0.7, 
that really creates a narrow drop in the frequency range. We're just cherry picking that 500 hertz just to drop that one. We don't want it hauling down all the other frequencies. That's why the sweep here and the sweep here at 0.7 are really worth it. They make a big difference there. So don't just leave them even though we're leaving them at zero. Next, we have one more frequency range that we really do want to target. Somewhere between 1.5K and 3K is really where the key intelligibility from your voice comes from. The downside of boosting these frequencies too much, though, is especially 3K, they can be kind of grating and a little irritating or shrill, so you don't want to do it too much. It's surprising when you go find a tone generator and you actually play what these tones sound like, but 3K is actually quite high up there, so do keep that in mind. But we do want to boost 1.5K and 2.7, 2.5, somewhere in there, just a little bit to give a little bit more clarity to our voice. So we're going to go plus 2 on both. Maybe you only want to go plus one, but something like this would really help, again, make sure that your voice is punchy and that your microphone stands out, because that's really what you want. If you're talking amongst game noise, no matter what game you're playing, there's a lot of competition for these frequencies. So you want to make sure that you're out and above it without having to raise your voice and create mud or distortion on the rest of the channel. You just want to be clear and crisp as you speak. Next, after that, we're going to take a dive somewhere around 13, 13 and a half K. We're going to bring that down to minus three. Most vocal mics don't have a lot of love up here anyway. Again, this is where there's a lot of special effects. So we're really not going to compete with those special effects or those music sounds. We're just going to leave them alone. And as you can see here, there's a pretty good graph here where we've really focused on getting rid of mud and making more clarity with our microphone to make it very easy to stand out amongst everything else on our live stream. Next, we have the compressor. The compressor's goal is to narrow the dynamic range. A really crude way of thinking about this is an auto mixer. That's not really what it's doing. It's not auto mixing, but it is tightening up the dynamic range. It's making your quieter moments a little bit louder and making sure that your loudest moments, if you rage quit or something like that, get compressed and you don't peak and distort. That's what the compressor is doing for you. So the first variable here, the threshold, this is at which rate or which volume, which level of noise the compressor will kick in. So I'm going to set this to minus 15. So for me, this means if I exceed minus 15 decibels, so zero is peaking, you can't go higher than zero. So minus 15, as I exceed that, the compressor kicks in. Now the compression that I recommend is 3.2 to 1. If you want to go really aggressive, you can do 4 to 1. It's not that bad, but most people prefer 3.2 to 1. It's a little bit more uh, relaxed and less blocky. But even then, 3.2 to 1 may not sound very aggressive, but if you think about everything that I'm saying over minus 15 gets compressed 3 to 1, that's pretty aggressive. So you really don't want to go that much more than that. So as I'm speaking right now, it is compressing everything over 3 to 1, keeping me in a tighter range. Now, to work this compressor harder, we want to add more gain to push us into that compressor so you get the compressor coming down because we need to push it up to get that squish going. I really wish that they had a meter here. I think that that'd be super cool to show people what that squish looked like. So I'm just going to add 5 decibels of makeup gain here. That'll push me up into the compressor so the compressor, compressor can constantly squish me down and work properly and keep me in that tighter window. Now the risk of over compressing is that it sounds like a limiter, blocky, digital, distorted, takes all the emotion out of what you're doing. You still want some emotion in what you're doing, so definitely don't go too aggressive. The downside of under compressing, again, is that you will exceed the compressor and peak if you do blow up or get really animated or something like that. Now the last setting that's only available on the full Go XLR but it's not available on the Mini is the de-esser. I find for me, I do have a tendency to have like a lot of mouth noise, a lot more grating frequencies. If you do want to round those off, the de-esser is an awesome tool to do that. It makes it a lot more palatable to listen to you for long periods of time, especially if you're somebody that does live streams that are over an hour, one hour to three hours. If you want people to actually be able to put up with you, the de-esser is a good tool to do that. I just put it in at 50%. I think that that sounds pretty good. Okay, so that's it for all the settings. We're going to walk back through it again in a second. One thing I want you to think about 
when you're watching this video as we go through the next recap here is that this might not sound the best on YouTube right now for this video. But I guarantee that these settings will help you the most when it comes to helping you stand out and work with other competing game noises. Try this on your next live stream when you have competing game noise or video or music and you'll really see what I'm talking about where it opens up the clarity of your microphone. It sounds a lot nicer to listen to. The best metaphor I have is at a concert, you don't have things like the acoustic guitar and the piano and the vocal all competing for the same frequencies. A good live sound engineer will spread them out and put them each into a slot so when you stand back from the mix, you can hear everybody evenly. That's really what we're going for with the mix here. So once again, with the noise gate, I'm gonna leave it off because I don't recommend it for talking head videos like this one, but if you must use one because of background noise issues, somewhere around minus 55 to minus 50, I wouldn't go more aggressive than that. You want it to easily open when you're speaking. Next, with the EQ settings here, we do want this built-in high pass filter. Get your microphone out of the sub. There's nothing useful for your voice down in the sub, especially if you're trying to be, have a nice clear voice amongst other game noise. Then we do have this low mid cut, again, creating more space in the microphone, really cleaning it up. And then we built that 1.5 to 2.5K bump to add a little bit more articulation without getting greedy and making it too grating or irritating. We just want it to sound nice and clear when we're speaking. And then we have a cliff after 13.5K because again, much like the high pass filter here, there's really not a lot of love for vocals above 13K. So we're just gonna get rid of it, make more noise for special effects. Next, with the compressor, we have a nice medium compressor here. Not too aggressive, not too loose, just to make the mixing a little bit easier to keep us more consistent throughout our live stream. And last but not least, we do have the de-esser. The de-esser is a great tool to make it easy and more palatable to listen to for a long period of time. I hope these settings work for you. If you do have any questions about anything that we've done in this video, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you do want to see pricing or specs for the RE20, the GoXLR, or anything that you see in this video, we have links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. <laughs>